I really can't tell the difference. Like that smell like mashed potatoes? Yeah, oh dude, what? It smells just like mashed potatoes. Impossible Whopper going in. Wow. As soon as the animals are sold, they're moved to packing plants in the neighborhood. After slaughtering, the meat of the animals is made ready for shipment. The sides of beef are examined by inspectors. The meat is shipped all over the country in refrigerated freight cars and trucks. Because meat is kept very cold in these cars, it stays fresh for long periods of time. Even after it's traveled thousands of miles, it will be in good condition. It seemed like 2019 was really the year of alternative meat. I mean, plant-based products were launching all over the place and getting loads of attention. In fact, this question was asked at a democratic presidential debate. Some experts suggested that eating less meat is one way to help the environment. You are a vegan since 2014. That's obviously a personal choice. So should more Americans, including those here in Texas and, and in Iowa, follow your diet? <laughs> Um, you know, first of all, I want to say no. I, I, actually, I want to translate that into Spanish. No. Um. <laughs> now, I could be wrong here, but I did some digging, and I could not find a single example of a dietary question being asked at a presidential debate. In the last 50 years, the global population has doubled, but the demand for meat has quadrupled. It turns out as delicious as meat is, it's one of the most inefficient ways of feeding humans. And it's reaching a breaking point. Currently, 83% of the world's farmland is either used for livestock or the fodder crops we feed to them. But animal products only make up 18% of the calories that humans eat. In the case of beef, only 3% of the fodder crops are converted into beef. We could solve hunger four times if we just ate the fodder crops directly. By 2050, the demand for meat is expected to grow another 30%, and with current methods, that is unsustainable. How are future generations going to be able to satisfy their craving for meat? I think I forgot which one's which already. <laughs> are you serious? Oh, it's that one, I think. You can tell. I think that. Yeah, that looks like real meat. Yeah, just for a nice comparison. How is it? Sure is a whopper. Some, some good classic Burger King. It's the stuff that made Robert Downey Jr. forget, or like, restart his life. In the first Iron Man, <clears throat> Tony Stark gets back to, I guess, America, California. He says, I want an American cheeseburger, and I want you to call for a press conference. Oh, yeah. Call for a press conference? Yeah. Hogan, what on drive. earth for? Cheeseburger first. But there's actually a, a deeper meaning to that whole scene because I guess prior to him getting casted in that movie, he was, I don't know how to describe it, he was, he was into drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he credits Burger King. He was like King. a meth head, wasn't he? He was like- Just a lot of cocaine addict. Oh, cocaine addict, yeah. He says he credits looking at a Burger King burger with motivating him to get clean because it was so disgusting. Yeah. And so he pays homage to Burger King and Iron Man. <laughs> How's that first bite? Juicy? Honestly, I couldn't tell the difference on the first bite. Really? No yeah. way. So I want to take a piece of just beef and eat another piece of just beef. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I kind of want to try that too. Take a little piece of your beef there. This beef's actually better. No way. If it's just the beef versus beef, I like this beef better. It has a more flavor to it. Let me see. All right, I'll try. Now that I have the beef for reference. Dude, this is a better burger, right, actually. The impossible, burger. the impossible one. No way. I think so. Um, are you just some I mean, maybe vegetarian just... fanboy? <laughs> you know, if I were them, I would just stop seasoning the real ones uh, <laughs> and keep seasoning the fake ones. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I would do. <laughs> just make the real ones worse. This is so pathetic. This is so un-American of me. Eat a burger with a knife and fork. Isn't that so sad? Here, I'll just get the beef since I just had the beef there. Or the, well, this is not beef. What is it actually? It's like soybean? It's plant-based, I don't know. 
Some I should know. I'll do my story. research by the time I upload this. <laughs> nice. All right. Impossible Whopper going in. Just like the food review guy. I feel like that guy right now. Dude. Wow. I, I legitimately like that better than the beef. Yeah. And yeah, I was not expecting what? that. I came in here being like, I just want to point out how much better beef is. <laughs> okay, that's weird. Why do I like that better? The Impossible Burger is 100% plant-based. Compared to regular beef, their patties only need 25% the water, only 5% of the land, and only emit 13% of the greenhouse gas emissions, and I thought it tasted great. Now, veggie burgers aren't new. Vegans have been making alternative burgers forever, but the difference with the Impossible Burger is that it is not marketed at vegans, it's marketed at ordinary meat eaters like myself. And it seems to be succeeding. When I tried it, I had to fly to California to get my hands on one, but today you can get one at any Burger King in the country. And Impossible Foods is not alone in this endeavor. Their competitor, Beyond Meat, is filling every Del Taco and Dunkin' Donuts with clean meat, but most importantly, they've partnered with Carl's Jr. to offer the Beyond Burger. And everything else is the same. Mm -hmm. How about price? How are they priced? Good question, do you have the receipt? Mm -hmm. The two regulars were 10 bucks, the two Beyonds were 13. Oh. Yeah, I prefer the real one. This one tastes, it tastes a little, to me it's kind of rubbery. Let's see. Did you it get it that seems texture? to be the thicker. This one it seems is thicker. Thick. Oh. The texture's rubbery. I really can't tell the difference. <clears throat> I definitely, you're right. I don't like this one as much. So here's the thing about the Impossible Burger versus this one. This one doesn't use actual hemoglobins. The Impossible Burger does. That's the molecule that carries oxygen through your blood uh, and other mammals. So when it's bleeding, when the Impossible Burger is bleeding, that's an actual effect as opposed to bead extract. Turns out Impossible Foods really stumbled onto something extraordinary with their added hemoglobins. It gives the meat that texture and taste that it needs to go that extra step above ordinary veggie burgers. But heme isn't exactly easy to come by in nature, so Impossible Foods had to build an entirely new workflow system for growing heme on an industrial scale. And the more efficient approach that we came up with was to uh, engineer a, a yeast and uh, have that produce uh, very high quantities of that heme. What Impossible Foods has invented is a tiny heme machine. And with meat-free heme, it has the foundation of a stunning imitation of a beef burger. But burgers are far from being the only animal products in desperate need of a plant-based replacement. Just Foods has been selling a plant-based scrambled egg alternative, which I would have loved to try, but I don't like eggs, so I volunteered my friends. Todd, I didn't sign up for this. No, you did not. Did you? Is this um, one? Wonder which one? one? This Oh wow. Should we try them? Now? Yes. Alright. Uh, God damn it, oh, Isaac. Isaac's making a mess. I'm making a fool of myself. It tastes like you didn't use any oil to cook that one. Butter. Oh. It doesn't taste bad, but I feel like you can kind of taste... <laughs> it's gonna be weird. I feel like you could kind of taste grass. Grass? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, you kind of taste that it's not the same. Like, this is definitely the one, right? The vegan? Yeah. So you can tell the difference. Yeah. I expected it to be able to You should try them, though. It's not the same thing. Yeah. Objectively speaking. I don't, I don't like this that much. I, I do. Yeah, this is the fake. So the fake is the last colorful one. Yeah. Yeah. See, these these chickens were actually happier because they were, they're free range chickens. That's why they're like brighter. And these plants are sad because they would. Murdered. You got your own fork. You're afraid of my germs? My own fork. Those are the plant based. Mm. <laughs> that was it's a It's really face. not bad. But, like, if you really like eggs, 
You're not gonna. Then it's not the same. Yeah, it's yeah, not, it's the, not same. the same. Like it's eggs, good, but these it's definitely. Good. That, that, I don't know. If you've never had eggs before, this is bomb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could make an entire video of side-by-side -side taste tests like this, but the only one that has really come close for me was the Impossible Whopper. Ultimately, we're going to need a better solution than using plants to substitute animal products. Lab-grown meat is meat that comes from a laboratory rather than from a living animal. It's grown from cultured cells that are extracted from living tissue. This is possible, it's been done, but it's an extremely expensive process. You need to pay dozens of biologists to meticulously go through meat tissue under a microscope and find the ideal stem cells with high reproductive rates. Then you need to arrange those cells on a special scaffold that will motivate the same texture growth that we would expect from real meat. There was also a time though when artificially growing heme seemed like an overwhelmingly expensive process and now impossible burgers are as cheap as natural burgers. Of course there's the added obstacle that many people find this idea of replacing meat repulsive. That's nasty. Ugh, doesn't sound right. I'm not really into like lab made things. It's unnatural. It just seems off. But we have seen humans eat meat. You've seen something as fresh and tasty as meat, but inorganically materialized out of patterns used by our transporters. If the human population continues to grow to 12 billion people as the UN predicts, we won't have enough farmland available to sustain that many meat eaters unless we make drastic changes to how this meat is made. But meat is a trillion dollar industry. Those that became wealthy through the status quo are not going to go without a fight. For instance, the egg industry has supposedly considered ordering a hit on the CEO of Just Foods, Josh Tetrick. Actually, I'm gonna quote what they said. Uh, Can we pool our money and put a hit on him, meaning you, and an executive vice president of the American Egg Board no. that offered, quote, to contact some of my old buddies in Brooklyn to pay Mr. Tetrick a visit. What's your reaction to that? Uh, I thought we must be doing something right. And some pushover states have already banned lab-grown meat from even being called meat in stores, instead of having to be labeled as cell-cultured food products. Of course it's always better to force the world to change around you than to actually be forced to compete. Recently articles have surfaced about the Impossible Burger in particular and how it contains 18 million times more estrogen than regular beef. This is partially true. The burger does contain about 44 milligrams of phytoestrogen, which is a uh, plant-based molecule that's structurally similar enough to real estrogen that it still interacts with our estrogen receptors. But we find comparable amounts of phytoestrogen in oats, beans, and beer. I tracked down the original source of this claim and sure enough it comes from Tri-State Livestock News. Definitely no conflict of interest there. The article heavily implies that eaten in sufficient quantities, the Impossible Burger will compel men to grow boobs. So I did some research to find an example of high amounts of phytoestrogen causing men to grow boobs, and in fact there was a man in 2008 who grew boobs after reportedly drinking three pints of soy milk per day. A pint of soy milk has about 220 milligrams of phytoestrogen, which means this man was drinking about 660 milligrams a day. In order to reach that amount with impossible patties, you need to eat 15 of them per day. Even if you just ate the patty without the bun or anything, that's 4,300 calories a day. We need to engineer a new solution for the growing demand for meat, and that effectively means turning most of the world vegan. This is easily the most controversial subject I've ever written about, and I've been afraid to make it because I fear I'll somehow manage to offend both meat lovers and vegans at the same time. People take meat personally. It's deeply rooted in our lifestyles and cultures, but these ideas really shouldn't be offensive. We're replacing gas cars with electric cars. We're replacing coal plants with solar farms. Why can't we do this? The answer is that we probably can.